So in this video, I want to talk about communication, what it is to really let somebody in, really have a real connection with somebody that causes them to really want to get to know you, to go deeper. In my last video, somebody asked me about the heart walk or the vulnerability walk, which I've called them in the past. In this video, I'm going to go into that and so much more. How the body actually creates real connection beyond some random technique and how you can learn to flow and, and think less and just really enjoy people. So I'm out here in, uh, in uh, Minnesota. I'm by the Mississippi River over there. I'm walking around still with my dad hanging out. I'm having an awesome time out here. And, um, and I thought this was the perfect place to come out and do a heart walk, a vulnerability walk, learn to let people in, learn to let the situation in, learn to let the moment in is a better way to say it. So we're gonna dive into that. But before I do, I want to ask you to like, subscribe, and share. Definitely share in this video um, because it really helps everybody to grow. We all learn from your shares, and I really appreciate it. So what do I mean by this? Well, first I want to talk about the center pillar of the body. This is the center pillar of the body. It's the heart, the stomach. It's actually the, the, the prefrontal cortex, the face, the throat, the heart, the stomach, the turn on, and then you got your grounding with your legs. We communicate through this body. All our communication flows through the body. You can't communicate without a body, right? You can't live a life without a body. You can't enjoy a, a beer without a body. You can't laugh with somebody without a body. And what we're really doing when we go out to communicate to enjoy another human being is we're learning to feel each other through this body. We're learning to connect. That's what connection is. I can feel her emotions because I can feel her heart. She can feel my heart. That causes us to do something that I call the bubble. It causes us to bubble up. It causes us to, wow, I can really feel your sadness. I can feel your grief. Now, that's not to be confused with a neediness. Like, oh yeah, that, that song made me sad. It wasn't a great song, right? And that's not needy. Or, wow, when I broke up with that girl when I was young, man, that was my first breakup. It really broke my heart. And she can feel that sadness then you can own it because you're a man and that's what makes you so attractive it can also be joy it can be like beauty that you see in the world you know when I told this girl that I love my baby sister so much that if I ever had a daughter I hoped that she would be like her and that girl grabbed me and kissed me so hard when I said that I didn't expect that to happen but it's because we were sitting there bonding in the bubble and I meant it I wasn't lying so life is about these moments these moments of connection these moments of feeling and one of the ways you train it is with a heart walk, with the vulnerability walks. Like my ability to walk out here and just take in nature, right? Take in this, this, this scene right here and just breathe it in and let it into my heart is everything. How about I take in the river and I let that in? It's taking in beauty in all its forms or stuff that you don't think is beautiful and then finding the beauty in it, right? Being able to see amazing things in everything. And sometimes it doesn't feel good. Sometimes it feels heavy, it feels dark when you let it in. And as you get comfortable feeling real emotions in response to the outside world that's all around you, that's when you learn to become somebody that somebody can communicate with. So I'm gonna explain the whole body, how it works, and we're gonna go through how to do this heart walk right now. Now, it's really simple. You focus on an idea here. I wanna meet a beautiful woman tonight. I wanna have a great conversation. I wanna create a bubble with a woman. I want to have a, a, a beautiful day, whatever it is. The idea goes here, not into the side of the brain where fear, doubt, and worry exists, as, as I believe Joe Dispenza talks about, but right here where I just focus on an idea. I drop it down here and I express it through my face, through my facial expressions. I feel it. I can smile about it. I really like that idea. And my micro expressions can, are congruent with that. Then I drop it into my throat where my voice is congruent with that, right? Where you can feel my emotions in my voice because that's, with women, that's huge, right? with anybody that's huge, whether your sales, marketing, family. Then I drop it into my heart where I can amplify that emotion, really feel love for it, and really feel this appreciation, which just amplifies the whole feeling because it runs through the body over and over. And then, uh, and if there's sadness, there's sadness. If there's grief, whatever's in the heart, right? If you're willing to own it, you have the courage to be, have an open heart, you can learn from it. Next, I drop it into my gut, which is where my gut instincts are. That's definitive, man. That's where your anger is, your power is. That's where your definite sense of purpose is. That's where you feel things like, this is gonna happen now. I'm going to do this. I'm gonna get this done. There's a, 
that's where your instincts are, your gut instincts. That's where your gut as a second brain is. If you look that up on uh, YouTube or anywhere on the internet, you'll learn about the gut as a second brain, how it's an instinctual brain. So as I'm focusing an idea, expressing it through the heart, through the face, and then I'm getting definitive about it in the gut, the gut starts to say, hey, go do this, go talk to her, say these exact words to her. You hear it in your head and you're like, I don't know why, but I'm gonna say this. And then boom, it lands. And you're like, wow, I can't believe that worked. Then you drop it down to your turn on where your passion gets involved, your creative energy, right? Down in the hips, down in the hips if I can do that right. And that's the area where you activate turn on and creativity and you run that up through your spine. Then there's the earth beneath you. Do you trust this earth to ground you out? Do you trust this earth to supply you your needs? You know, food, water, shelter. Do you have a sense of connection to the earth? Are you a man that's grounded into the earth? Can she feel that you have this sense of power and connection to the earth that makes you feel safe? That's, that's the body in a nutshell. That's the center pillar. So what I want to do is when I take in beauty in the world, this is how I practice it. And I used to practice this every day for, for at least 15, 20, 30 minutes some days. And I walk around and I just take something in first thing in the morning. And I breathe it in and I create what I call a, a conduit, kind of like energy, where I'll look at something like that tree or the nature scene and I'll just narrow my gaze, just like a camera lens, tighten it, loosen it until I feel just the right amount of tension so that I can get a sense that this thing in front of me, I can take it in and I can feel it come inside me almost, like I'm taking the image into me. Then I drop it into my heart and I let my heart have a reaction to it. I relax all through these muscles here and I just get a reaction to it. Wow, that tree's beautiful. Or when I really feel it, the tree might suddenly start to feel like it wants to talk to me. It feels like it's alive and it feels really good. That's my hippy dippy part, right? A little hippy dippy in that, right? Like how about this right here? You got some people coming by. They're cruising in their canoes or their, their kayaks there. It's beautiful. And so you just take that in and you get an emotional response. Wow, that feels really good. Or the sun feels amazing. Or the ground feels amazing. And then you go from there, you, you bring it down to the stomach. And the stomach, I feel this sense of instincts. You know what? I should go ask them about that kayak. That could lead to me getting out on the kayak with them. That could lead to me falling in love with kayaking and building a whole life of kayak. It could lead to me, I got instinct could say, hey, go say hi to that girl right over there and say this to her and you do it because if you have love for it, the gut gets it. He likes this idea, pain, pleasure. There's pleasure associated with her. There's something about her. The gut says, say this. She ends up becoming your girlfriend. She ends up becoming your wife. It's the same thing in sales, the same thing in marketing. This is how you hit flow state. Then you ground into the ground and you feel the support of the earth with it. The electrons from the earth, the energy, whatever you want to say. You know, they, they say when you earth, you got electrons coming up through your body. And I know that's true. I should actually be in bare feet right now. So I'm going to do that. And you let that earth, as so I look down here again, you know, feed your body because they say in earthing that the electrons come up and they actually, and they've actually charted this, they actually de-stress the body. So I have this whole idea coming into my body and it feels really good. So every morning I would do this for 15 minutes. I would just take something in and some mornings I just had armor on my heart. For a long time I couldn't do it. I would sit here and try to take something in and I felt nothing. All this would feel cold. It feels shut off. I'd be in my head thinking in the side of my brain worrying, not quite here. But if I committed and I stayed with it, at some point, there would be this emotional breakthrough. And all of a sudden I'd be like, oh, I can feel with my heart. You probably all had this moment. Maybe you bubbled up with somebody and you started to feel them. There was this moment where I could talk to this person forever. Or I saw this sunset, I could look at it forever, or this piece of artwork. And when I dropped in, when I dropped in in the mornings, that's when I felt like I took my first breath. Not just oxygen, but something more something that had to do with what we call feeling, being in feeling. It's the beginning of flow state. And I would just sit in that feeling state. I'd walk around in that feeling state for a while. I'd make sure my heart was open that day because it would always make my day go better. All my work day would go better. My communications would go better. I'd go out and talk to somebody. Now I'm open. I go to the coffee shop. Hey, how you doing? And I can feel their emotions. I can feel their senses. And they like talking to me better. That ability to let somebody in is huge. So I used to call that the heart walk. And then when I go talk to people and let them in, I call it the vulnerability walk because now you add a whole new element, right? The tree's not gonna reject me, but this girl could reject me. That's the feeling inside of me is there's a sense, wow, I like her. Oh my God, hi, what's your name? And she's, she could shut you down, she could open up. That's why it's vulnerable. 
But as you get stronger and more comfortable with feeling her emotions, you become strong and vulnerable. You just become strong. Like, I'm comfortable with my emotions. How you doing? Oh, you don't want to talk today? Maybe tomorrow. And the next day you come in and you're so consistent being open-hearted. She's like, hey, she starts to get curious about you. Starts to wonder, why is this guy always so happy? Why is he so open? And then when you go approach people and have conversations, it's so much more powerful. It's like, damn, look at you. You are beautiful. And your whole heart's blasting. I just want to say hi to you. Or when you tease somebody, you know what? You're being difficult. I'm not talking to you anymore. Go away. Go away. And she can feel the incongruence that you're one level you're pulling her in and another level you're pushing her away because you have so much feeling in your body. That's what the heart walks and the vulnerability walks teach. Now this is a quick overview, but you get the idea. Learning to feel with the core of your body is everything in communication. Getting into that bubble that you've all felt when you're out at a bar, when you're out flirting with a girl, when you're out having a good time is everything. Learning to just let a woman in and just enjoy her company is everything. And you can do it, I promise you. You can do this if you just practice. It does take regular practice. I used to be shut off half the day, if not the whole day. And then I got down to like 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, and I just worked at it really hard, learning to relax the face, the jaw, down into the heart, and then eventually down to the stomach. And what we found in the workshops and the seminars and the trainings is when you want to get really good at connecting with people, if you get the heart and the stomach working together, they really begin to trust you as a man. Because the heart makes them like you, the gut makes them believe that you can get shit done and that you're powerful as a man. And we found when we took guys out on dating workshops that they did a lot better when they got into their hearts. When they got in their hearts, women started to enjoy talking to them, but they started to get attracted when they got into their guts with their hearts. So there you go, man. Um, it's a heart walk. That's a vulnerability walk. Have you ever been in the bubble? Have you ever felt where you were letting people in and you're feeling their deepest emotions? Um, have you ever felt where you really enjoyed a person, right? Like when I look at a beautiful woman and I let her in, or anybody really, I'm trying to see the best version of themselves, even if they're grumpy in that moment. Can I see the innocence beyond this personality they're presenting to me? Can I enjoy that innocence of my heart and my stomach? Because that oftentimes will disarm people. And so I want to invite you into this idea that you can do this, you can practice this, you can learn this. And uh, it's a very powerful process when done over time. Give it some time to learn, a month, two months. And you'll probably find it goes much quicker, but just don't look for the results. Just enjoy it and see what happens. I'd love to uh, hear your comments in the video. Definitely put a comment about this with your practices, how you're doing, what you're learning, if you've done it before. Um, if you understand what the bubble feels like, maybe you've never done it, but you get it. Like, I've been there, man. I get it. I get it when I'm in that flow state and I'm talking to people and they just want to talk to me. I get it when I'm out in nature and there's beauty everywhere. And... I can't, I just take it in and it's just gorgeous. It's like the trees are talking to me. It's like the art is talking to me. I can't seem to do it with my left hand there. Um, that's what I'm talking about. See, I'm gonna end on this story now. I used to really love art. I didn't love art, excuse me, the other way around. The woman I was dating loved the art back then and I didn't get the art. Now I love the art. And I would go to this, I went to the Getty once with this woman I was dating, this beautiful woman. She really loved this painting at the Getty. It was a Van Gogh painting of the irises, the twisting irises, you know, going up at an angle. And supposedly Van Gogh painted that when he went into the insane asylum after he cut off his ear. And she really wanted to see that painting. She said that painting meant a lot to her. And she was standing there crying. Well, first she was just standing there. I saw her back and people were coming up and looking at her from the side and uh, kind of curious about her, wondering what she's doing. And then as I walked up next to her, I looked at her, I saw these tears streaming down her face. She was letting that painting in. That painting reminded her of her father who had committed suicide. He found her, she had found his body. That painting really released a lot of trauma out of her by her letting it in, by her being and feeling with that painting, by her processing those emotions. That painting, that really changed her life. It really helped her to grow. And that's what feeling can do for you. As you learn to feel more and you learn to go out in nature and enjoy life and the beauty of the world, your whole life can change. The whole way you relate and talk to people can change. The connection, the feeling, the intuitive hits you get off of conversations can change. So consider trying this today. Consider starting right away. And again, one more time, drop some comments. I'd love to see them. And remember, only the confident really live. See you in the next video.